Hi and welcome to Real Magic Review. This is a vlog. Um, this is not a review. Well, it's kind of a review. I went to the Blackpool Magic Convention and like I did with a session convention, I like to have a little bit of a sort of unedited, easy for me to say, unedited ramble uh, about the day I had there. And the reason I'm doing it really, um, other than for my own ego, is really to talk about the comparison because I haven't been for a few years. So I wanted to see if it had changed. So just a little bit of boring backstory. I used to go a lot. I got really jaded with it. I went for a bit of a kind of fell out of love with magic a little bit. And the Genesis was probably at that convention a good few years ago where I just walked around and saw nothing but cynical sort of sales. Every single lecture was a sales pitch. I didn't feel like I was seeing any kind of love of magic at that specific year. Anyway, so uh, that was a kind of start of my falling out with magic. And now I'm back with, with a bang and definitely right back into things. Uh, and the magic world seemed to have, seems to have changed a little bit and, and well, changed for the better, I think, in the last few years and also has a few a few issues still. So I think it's a good sort of way to discuss that. So um, I went for the day. So it's, like I said, it's not a review of the whole convention. Um, I went, got up super early, went with my daughter. So I was in a, a slightly different state of mind than I would usually be and people that have seen me at Mad uh, Blackpool before my friends have said like by sort of day three I look like a like a just a broken man I, it just breaks me in in all manner of ways so the first thing was the um we went in to see a bit of David Stone's lecture obviously heaving and we didn't get in at the beginning so it, it's always a, a joy to watch it was the same lecture I think very similar uh, and I can't judge it all because I didn't watch it all because we couldn't get close enough really but uh, it was seemed similar to his latest DVD, which I reviewed on this channel, uh, which I really, really liked, other than a couple of issues. Um, so so he's, a, he's someone that knows how to perform and someone, that, there's a reason why that room is full, right? Uh, and he sort of showed that as well in the Gala Show later, which I'll talk about in a bit. And then we went over to watch a bit of the Morgan and West lecture, and they are always a joy to watch on stage in a very different way to David Stone. And what I liked about them is actually what they were talking about is they know how to use space on stage they know that it hasn't got to be this kind of full-on sort of gallop of information uh, they're very relaxed it watching them lecture is is as enjoyable as kind of watching a show you know they they you know a couple of things went wrong when we watched it and they covered it really really well well they didn't have, have to cover it they were just very authentic and talking about uh, about it as it happened, which was which was a joy to watch, no awkwardness, and that trick that they were this kind of thought of card transposition between two of them that uh, they actually demoed on their own uh, when we saw saw it. Cause again, we went in a bit late, um, but th that trick's just a great trick as well. And, and again, for my daughter who you know, doesn't want to sit through whole lectures of magic, we kind of sat at the back trying not to make too much noise going in and out, uh, and and just you know you could see that she was understanding and appreciating what was going on. It wasn't too it wasn't too explainy, if you see what I mean. And again, I've got this problem in massive rooms like that. When those rooms are big in Blackpool, you know, if you're getting too in, into detail about the sort of mechanics of a trick, it just, I mean, it gets tedious for me and I'm really into that. So, uh, so really, 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 really enjoyed that and what a great trick. So then it was the, okay, so the audience were Wayne Dobson. Now this is where I started having a few issues and and I've got to be very sensitive about this because I'm aware of the scenario surrounding this and the tradition of Blackpool and the stuff that goes on. So, and a huge fan of Wayne Dobson, you know, obviously, you know, who can't respect what's, what's, you know, his history with magic and all that kind of stuff. And the fact he's still going on stage and doing this, this friend of Wayne Dobson show every year. It's a big tradition with Michael J. Fix, Fitch. Um, I just, I found the whole thing a little bit uncomfortable and I found it uncomfortable for a number of reasons okay now well the first reason was there's a racist gag at the beginning and that for me and you know I'm very aware that we can go overboard with political correctness and start judging people when they say the wrong word and all that kind of stuff but I but I just think we're in a situation now where I just don't want to hear racist jokes I don't want to hear I don't care who they're from uh, I don't want to hear them okay because I think that we are we're at a point now where we just need to move forward and it's all about intent and and i think that the you know you go in and again i'm seeing this from my 14 year old daughter who is probably i'm, I'm oversensitive a little bit but actually i don't think i am i'm not oversensitive to a racist joke but i'm kind of worried about you know all sorts of things not worried about swearing any of that stuff and they did say at the beginning if you've got kids here it might be time to leave because of swearing now swearing is not really a problem for me 
um, if it's in a certain context. What is a problem for me is a racist joke. And the minute that happens, I'm, I'm kind of done. Um, so I do think there was a bit, it, it brings up a really, really interesting conversation and it's not the time to have it here, but I'd love to have that conversation about what is acceptable in, in certain scenarios and what isn't, you know. So, but, I, you know, I turned to my daughter and said, you know, do you want to go? And she's like, no, I'm really enjoying it. So it's, 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 a, it's one man's opinion. And I, like I said, I've got to be honest. So after that show, it was the dealers. And it just, again, it just felt like the whole place had a little bit more of a contemporary feel than it used to have a few years ago. You know, the, all the stands are sort of up the game a bit. Everything looked a lot better. It looked a lot sharper. Um, it didn't feel quite as hectic in there. And I don't know whether that was just because of the time of Dale's in there. But I went in a few times and it felt like I could get around there quite easily without Doing, getting that really hot kind of panic, which, to be honest, much of the time might be due to hangover more than anything. And then really it was just the, the garlic show. Look at a garlic show. <laughs> the garlic show. Garlic show. What was that one? Actually, Mel Mellor's talked about garlic quite a lot in his show. But um, the garlic show. So, so like I said, this isn't a sort of in-depth review because it's not like I did loads. But the Saturday night garlic show was a really interesting one. I've had mixed reviews about the Friday Night Gala show. I had people saying it was the best gala show they'd ever seen. And there were some people saying it was, it was a bit flat. And I, I have no opinion on that because I didn't see it. Uh, so this one was, what was nice is that you knew it wasn't going to be four and a half hours long with 35 acts on, which we, I, I've never sat through a gala, show, a gala show. Why do I keep saying gala show? A gala show at Blackpool. Um, it, just, it just got to a point for me that, but after about, I don't know, what was it, two hours, I, and I'd, I'd always be up in the gods, you know, I'd always be up in, in looking down at illusions and seeing people in boxes and stuff, which was always a bit of a problem. And when I actually came this time, I was worried about taking Gracie and being up there. And like Russ had said, no, we don't do that anymore. We do two shows, so you don't get higher than the first lot and the first tier. So that would, that's great, the fact that everybody in that theatre can, can see everything. Um, so we had great seats, which was brilliant. Uh, I'll run through what I thought of the acts. So you've got, the, weirdly enough, the compa came on after the s second act, which, which is interesting. But this is all good for discussion. This is a, my opinion will, will be different from many of yours, no doubt. And uh, like I said, I'm having to look at notes because this is un totally unscripted. Uh, okay, so you've got David Stone came on. What, the, the dog bit, I'm sorry, I'm not going to give it away in case you see him, but that dog bit was just genius. I just, it's a mechanical dog. No, it isn't a me mechanical dog. It's actually dog. just, just what, what a lovely opening. Um, really like the trick. He did like a, a credit card and glass thing, um, in, in ice thing. Um, and it was in ice. I didn't say glass is a sort of slip then. It, it is in ice. Uh, and he is just really good on stage, a good opening act. It, it's, it's nice to see him. I prefer seeing him actually on stage performing than I do uh, and lecturing, really, because he seems, you know, because it's a slightly different feel, isn't it? So I really enjoyed that. Um, Mandy Mooden. Now, there was, a bit of, there was a bit of up and down on this on, on social media, I noticed, that some people thought that the sort of insult humour was, was offensive. And this is why it's an important discussion to have, I think, because... You compare that to what I'm just about to talk about, and I think they're two very different things, but people kind of put them in the same camp. So my feeling is that that, le that kind of insult humour is it's character-based, all right? And you've got to look at intent with this. Uh, and the same as what I was, you know, we'll say about Mel Mellows, and you look at people like Graham Jolly. There's all these lines and quips that come out that could be seen as insulting a member of the audience. Now, my feeling is that there's nothing... There's nothing derogatory about that person that they're insulting. You know, you, you're, they're clearly lines that they do every time. And I think purposefully they're done like that. You know, they're done like that to say, you know, I'm, I don't mean this. I'm saying this as a joke and I'm not insulting you personally. And I'd, I'd be quite surprised if, if, if somebody was genuinely insulted. And it's, it, I've noticed that it's only really magic audiences that I've noticed that get quite upset about this stuff. And my theory is that there's a lot of books written, some of them now quite dated, saying you should never, ever say anything slightly insulting to a member of your audience. I completely disagree. I think there's always a permission there if it's done. And you look at that intent. If that intent doesn't come from anywhere nasty and it isn't personal and it isn't prejudice and it isn't anything like that, then it's clearly character-based. And someone like Mandy, I thought, was was professional, a couple of things didn't go so well, but you felt comfortable, I felt comfortable with her on stage, I felt that like I was in good hands. And I think that's the reason why she does what she does and she does it as well as she does. Now, some of you didn't like it and that's fine and I'm not saying you're wrong, I'm just saying other opinions are available, but I felt that that was all right. Now compare that with um, the compare who was Derek Scott, 
All right, now Derek Scott is someone that's been doing what he's doing for a very long time. So I kind of felt like I should have felt the same way in his hands. It's interesting to see what happens when, you know, there's always this thing in comedy and everything that you've got a few minutes to win the audience over. And it's interesting to see what happens when that doesn't occur. So Derek Scott lost the audience quite quickly. And for this, a similar reason as what I talked about earlier was there was a racist gag. And to me, nothing is gonna kill a room as dead as a racist gag. Now, arguably, you could say the same thing, that it comes from a place of, of not insulting, but I think it, it, at the moment, no, it, it doesn't. I think it does come from a place where, you, you know, people know better now that, that if you're gonna pinpoint an Israeli person and talk about terrorist bombs, we don't need to do that at the moment because of what's happening in our society. You've got to look at the big, bigger picture. And that's the difference to me. If you take someone like Mandy Mood and saying a gag about, you know, that could be an insult humor about someone that's clearly a stock line that isn't about their race, that isn't about their size, that isn't about, it's just a, a generic sort of gag that is, is for a laugh that with a kind of wink and a, a pinch of salt. It's very different to when you're looking at what's going on at the moment that we do have to really be careful of of not saying to Israeli people, we're going to connect you with bombing, because because the the, the, the consequence of that is far is, is far bigger, and, and we do have to move on. And I think that when we're doing those gags, and to the Irish, I think it's the same, you know, about bombings, and to German people, you know, referencing, you know, Hitler. Really, you, you've got you've we've got to move on. We've just got to move on. And and it was almost reassuring that most people felt that way. Now, a lot of his stuff he did later, I thought would have played actually really well if he had the love of the audience. And as a compa, you've got to have that love of the audience. And I think that love comes from a trust and it comes from, from compassion and it comes from, yes, you can still insult people, but you've got to be, you've got to do it from a place where you're saying, look, I don't mean this and actually I really respect you. And I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of sort of silent body language that does that and, and that wasn't, wasn't achieved and actually for, so every all the stuff that was on there felt you know felt long and drawn out and and was an issue now that is not saying that Derek Scott is not a good performer I know he is and I know that that stuff with certain audiences would have played I don't mean the sort of racist gag I mean the kind of you know all the kazoo stuff you know when you get that in the right audiences like I, in 96 I went to see a lot of circus and it, you can play really well but it just wasn't for that room and and it was it was quite uncomfortable Saying that, the rest of the acts, you know, I thought were pretty solid. Um, Rudy Kobe, I thought was slightly disappointing. It was okay. I think that was one of those acts that does actually genuine benefit from a bit of distance. Well, I had a pretty good seat there in row F. Uh, and Gracie, you know, was good sort of barometer because she doesn't watch a lot of magic. And she was just kind of saying, I can see kind of exactly what's going on. So there, there was a little bit, uh, you know, it's a good act. It's a solid act. But for me, tiny bit disappointing. Um, Tom Noddy, I absolutely love Tom Noddy, you know, the bubble guy, if you've not seen him, just a really relaxed, clearly been doing what he does for a very, very long time and shows that you don't need a really tight, hilarious script to do this stuff. The fact that you're comfortable on stage creating these beautiful bubbles and just going, hey, look at that, is, I think, enough. And I think that's the same with magic. I think sometimes, you know, the clever scripts and the humour is brilliant, but sometimes we can just show something and be really proud of it and keep doing it and look relaxed and, and have that lovely demeanour where you just want to kind of, you know, give someone a cuddle because they're so nice on stage. So, so and that's, you know, it's that love that you get from the audience as well. Uh, Hector Mancha, and thanks for Dan Mission for reminding me the name. I just had to text him because I couldn't remember it. Um, again, I'm not a massive Manip fan. I love some Manip stuff, but I think it can get a bit dull. But I thought it was a really beautiful, lovely, wonderfully put together routine that had taken a lot of thought and was just a little bit different than the usual. Kind of, hey, you know, it, it, it was a lovely thing and a, and a really nice ending. Uh, and Eric Chen at the end was just how lovely, you know, to finish a gala show with someone with a camera on a close up table doing the most wonderful close up. You know, talk about oil and water and <laughs> stuff like that. It's just, and having Gracie next to me just going with that wide eyed kind of. You know, enjoying and understanding every single moment of that act was, was great. So we enjoyed that show. It was a solid show. It wasn't too long. It was a nicely put together show. The issues I've talked about, and that is not a sort of condemnation of, of any booking. You know, you when you book these people, you trust that they're not going to do that. You know, there should be an, it's kind of like you shouldn't have to decide. If someone is a professional and they've been doing this for a lot of years, you shouldn't have to say to them, oh, by the way, can you not do any racist gags? It should, you know, it, it's, it's a given, right? And then 
we followed that with the Mel Mellor show and that's another interesting comparison because there you've got this kind of insult humour but you've also got that balanced out with Mel saying loads of really lovely things about the people on stage. So Mel's was a really nice way to finish the, the, the day actually. It was a really professional show. Um, really, you know, again, not in those, those convention rooms aren't easy to play for anybody, are they? And I felt that he just played that room really, really well. Uh, Gracie really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. The only weird thing was um, that his face was in shadow for most of it, and I'd never seen the impact of that so much. You know, he's wearing a hat, and it must have been the lighting. And the lighting was good in that room, so I don't know where he was positioned, but, but a really interesting lesson of kind of, because you've got like a hat with a pig in it that's putting shadow on your face, a lot of the, the jokes from where I was sitting, we weren't that far back. You just lost that eye contact thing, which was quite interesting as a, as a kind of side note. Um, but as a, as, a, as a convention, I, I think it's, you know, I wanted to, I was gutted I couldn't come back for the Sunday. And usually when I used to go to Blackpool after Friday, I was gutted I wasn't going home. You know, I was kind of like, I have to go two more days of this. And it's clearly upped its game. I think it's, you know, Russ Stevens knows about performers and he knows what to put on. And it, it doesn't mean that kind of he can have control over every word that everybody's going to say. Uh, but I'm really, really, you know, I came out of that, like I said, sad I couldn't go back in Sunday, sad I wasn't there the Friday, really wanting to do the whole thing. Um, and without a doubt, I'm getting my tickets for next year and doing the whole three days. And that's a really good sign for me. That's like a really positive thing. I think the Blackpool Magic Convention is, is now going to become what it should have been when it used to boast the biggest and best magic convention in the world. Uh, for me, it was the biggest. It definitely wasn't the best. And now it can, alongside other conventions, you know, start becoming more contemporary. And there are some issues that have to be ironed out. And maybe the only way that we can iron out those issues is with time, you know, because, you know, what can you do when, when people just won't move forward um, as, in the same way maybe comedy has and, and music and things like that. So, um, you know, but, you know, I, I came out of Blackpool still loving magic. You know, I got back, I got the books out, I practiced and, uh, and I felt really, really inspired by magic again, which is a really good thing. So thank you again, Russ, and, um, and all the organisers for it. Uh, and I hope you don't take anything I've said as a, being a slight against the convention. Uh, I just think it really, really has to be said. So uh, thanks very much. Any comments, put them below. If you hate what I said, um, I'll, I'll prepare for the slating and, uh, and have a great one. Cheers.